Yeah, how to make it go. Make it go. <laughs> <laughs> this video is gonna be so raw. It's gonna be totally like famous porn star name here. What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here. And we're gonna do a video that I think that is going to be right up a lot of people's wheelhouse. And that is how to troubleshoot a computer that is just being a complete hole. The Lickmax 2 120 and 240 from Enermax is another awesome choice of AIO liquid coolers for gamers and enthusiasts without breaking the bank. Patented shunt channel technology provides extra layer of cooling capability. Click the link below to find out more. So there's nothing more frustrating than, especially for a new builder, if you don't know what to troubleshoot, you go to turn on your computer, when you have power to it, of course, you go to turn on your computer and pretty much nothing is gonna happen where you think it's booting and everything's good and then it will just shut off. And then we'll turn back on and shut off. And turn back, and, it, and it's like, you're like, what the hell do I do? So we're gonna kind of talk today about what my first steps would be on this. Um, I don't even have the display port plugged in because we know that we have, see, it just shut off right there. Now, if you watch, it's gonna turn back on. And I just do that over and over and over again. Now, the first thing I would do, honestly, is uh, most commonly when you get these types of boot loops, that something isn't seated properly, it could be the RAM. It's very unlikely that it's the CPU considering it really only fits in there one way. Um, and this CPU has been seated ever since it was first built, no problem. Uh, and the graphics card. Now he did tell me that he transported this PC in the back of his car, so it made me wonder maybe something was jostled loose. So the very first thing I'm gonna do here anyway, is scoop my chair up, and I'm just gonna pop out the memory. Both sticks, and I'm going to make sure that these are, you know, that everything looks good with the pins, no issues there, and I'm just gonna reseat it. You wanna make sure you get clicks, on both sides. If you have a motherboard where it only has one tab, put it on the side without the tab first, put it in straight, and make sure that the tab on the top clicks. Some of the newer motherboards uh, only have a tab on the top. Gonna do the same thing here with the, the graphics card. Take off the cable, take out the retention screw, unplug it from the PCIe, make sure it clicks in all the way, make sure the retention tab is clicked, and then tighten this back down. Turn the power supply back on if it has a toggle switch. Some don't. If they don't, unplug the power from the back. Power it on, and let's see if we get anywhere. All right, well, it just turned off on us, so unfortunately, uh, that wasn't our problem. Now, the CPU fan is turning, so you would wanna make sure that it's not turning off because of the fan not running or something like that. Uh, but if that's not the case, then go ahead and, once again, unplug your PC from power. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug anything plugged into the motherboard with the exception of the front panel connectors and uh, the RAM and graphics card. So I'm not gonna have any SATAs plugged in, I'm not gonna have any HD audio, no USB plugs, USB 3s unplugged, leave the fans plugged in, and now we're gonna try it again. We're gonna see if maybe we have some sort of a conflict with the peripheral device. And if, once again, it's very repetitious here. You kinda wanna do an, a, a form of elimination here and see if anything gives you any sort of different result. All right, so once again, it just power cycled on us with none of the peripherals plugged in. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and once again, turn off power, and I'm going to unplug one stick of RAM. Now you also need to consult to your manual on which channels need to be used for only one stick. Uh, but it could be a bad stick of RAM, it could be a bad memory slot. So in this case here, I'm just gonna start with one channel and see if that gives us any different results. <gasps> Look at that. That's the farthest we've gotten yet. All right, so as you can see right there, and what's funny about this is we've actually spent I don't know what, an hour of troubleshooting this before even starting the video? Yeah, this is the farthest we've gotten here where we actually got into BIOS. And we did that by simply taking out one stick of RAM. And uh, what, you know what's, what's kind of disconcerting about this though is the fact that we did this already and this didn't work. 
But for the sake of the video, we are going back through the steps. So that's sort of, sort of the frustrating part about troubleshooting PCs here. Oh, look at that. All right, so let's go ahead and get into our BIOS. This is a good sign. What I want to do now that I, that I got into BIOS is I want to load optimized defaults. So in your BIOS settings, you, you're going to start, your menu is probably going to look all different. But typically in a menu that says save and exit or something like that, you can find this load optimized defaults. A lot of motherboards F5 will also, in this case, it's load previous values. Let's try F8. Nope. Try F7. There. So in the F7 on this one is load optimized defaults. So let's go ahead and do that. F10, save config and exit. Yes. And let's see if it actually reboots. And if this works, I'm actually going to be shocked because we already did this and it didn't work. That's normal for it to want to turn off after you do a load optimized default. So it's possible. I'm not even 100% certain that it's bad RAM because we tried different RAM already in this. Interesting. So let's see what happens here. I don't know. It's not looking too good. See, and now we're boot looping again. So we've got a very intermittent problem here. Now, I, we've already tried a clear CMOS. That's another thing that you could always try uh, when you do this. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm in one of these situations here where the problem here is so intermittent and sporadic, it really doesn't make any sense. Uh, this one is messing with me. Quite literally, this computer's f***ing with me. And I mean that because mid-shooting this video, we started over. It decided to work. We were like, oh, okay, cool. So, we, so it's working now. Nope. It just decided to do it again. So here we are. That time it, it turned off faster. Okay, so here are the symptoms. We've got a computer here that was working fine. The owner took it to work, used it there, no problems, sat there for a while, brought it. Look, it just booted. <laughs> it's just... So it's been sitting here boot looping and then suddenly decided to work. The main BIOS is corrupted. The system will be recovered from the backup BIOS. Please do not turn off power or reset the system. This may take a few minutes. Oh, if this reboots right now, you're <laughs> All right, come back to me. So I was just saying that this thing is with me because we've been sitting here for a while now, just boot looping it, trying different things, getting ready to do this video. And in the middle of me kind of preparing for the next shot, it just randomly booted up. So anyway, it said the main BIOS is corrupted. System will recover from the backup BIOS. Um, this is a dual BIOS motherboard, so that's a good thing. But this is an old B75, I say old B75, it's really not that old, so 2013, 2012-2013-ish uh, era. But it does have a dual BIOS, so Gigabyte is auto backing up. This might end up being the problem. The question is, why did it corrupt in, to begin with? I don't know. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to let this go, and we're going to see what happens next. I'm not going to bother moving forward with this video, because this computer is just going to troll the shit out of me anyway. I'm, I'm going to keep making this video, because I'm not going to let this computer win. All right, so... Where do I even start? So I started by making a video and showing you guys how to troubleshoot your computer when you start getting weird wonky things happening. And I thought, oh, this would be fun. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we can teach somebody something. So while preparing for this, this, oh, I didn't plug in the mouse. While preparing for this video, um, Captain Awesome, is that really? <laughs> you, you named your computer Captain Awesome. All right, anyway, this is getting better and better. He called me last night and he said his computer would turn on and turn off, like you guys saw. So he brings it over this morning because I said, hey, bring it over, maybe we'll make a video about this. He brings it over, I plug it in, it boot loops like crazy, right? About every 10 seconds it would shut off and reboot. Uh, I, try, I swapped out the memory, I swapped out the graphics card, um, we unplugged all the peripherals from it, making sure that there was no, no conflicts in there, all the hard drives were, un or were unplugged, the USB devices were unplugged, same thing. Unplugged the graphics card and the computer would boot, well, when I say boot, it would power on and not power off. So I said, okay, well, let's see if maybe we're getting an image out of the iGPU. Plug that into the motherboard, no image. We, the, the monitor's light would turn blue, like it thought it was gonna get an image, but we just got a black screen. So I, th I thought, okay, <clears throat> we're gonna make a video about this because we're gonna, we're gonna troubleshoot this and it's gonna help people. So we start making the video. In the middle of the video, the thing just goes, into, into BIOS recovery. And I don't mean the, the BIOS recovery you saw where it was backing up, but it went into a load optimized default option screen. So I click load optimized default, it reboots and starts boot looping again. So I was like, okay, something is clearly not right with this computer. Let's go ahead and continue with the video. So then we start making the video again, 
like you guys just saw start to make, where it just suddenly goes, oh, BIOS is corrupted, let's back up. And uh, it, it recovered on its own. It only took about 100 boot loops for it to decide it should maybe do that. So here's what we're gonna do. Because I refuse to let this computer win, we're gonna talk about what I would have done based on the situation. So let's say hypothetically you're still boot looping. The first thing I would have done is, well, let me shut this down. Let me see if I can force it to do it again. I don't know, I think, I think it was a BIOS, corrupted BIOS, and it just reflashed itself, so that's a good thing. Okay, so anyway, I shut down the computer, and I'm curious now as if to whether or not it's going to boot or troll. So let's find out together here. All right, all the fans are ramping, doing their thing. USB came on. You mother I was kind of hoping that it would have not actually booted so I could continue this legitimately. All right, so if you were getting boot loops, the first thing that I would actually do is I would turn off the computer, I would unplug the power cord, or flip the switch if you have one of those toggle switch, but for the sake of simplicity, just unplug the power cord, push the power button to drain all of the energy out of the system, and then I would un unclip the RAM and reseat it, and the same thing with the graphics card. I would take the graphics card out of the PCI Express slot and plug it back in. If the issue continued, then the next thing I would do is unplug anything on the motherboard that isn't needed. I would unplug all the USBs from the back of the motherboard, I would unplug not the front side connectors if your motherboard doesn't have you know, built-in power buttons on the motherboard, but leave the front side panels connected. I would unplug SATA, unplug USB 2.0, unplug USB 3.0, and anything else that might be plugged in with the exception of power and the fans. Then I would try and boot and see if anything improved. If, some, if nothing improved, then I would take the graphics card out of the equation, unplug that, and if you have an Intel um, CPU, then you do have an iGPU or a, a built-in HD, Intel HD graphics on the CPU. You can always tell because on the back of the motherboard, there'll be usually an HDMI or a DVI port. Um, plug the monitor into that with no graphics card and see if it boots. If it doesn't boot, uh, then your issue's more than likely not your graphics card. And then the next thing I would quite honestly do is take everything out of the case. Maybe there's a short, uh, and I would start inspecting the motherboard for either swollen capacitors, little black charred spots, both front and back. But I would take the motherboard, place it on a box, and then so it's kind of like a, a ghetto test bench, and take the case out of the equation, and then try and boot it. If it works, then you probably had a short somewhere. Maybe a wire was pinched behind the motherboard tray. Uh, maybe it was pinched in the back of the case when you closed the case up. And uh, if it works, then put it all back in. Be very careful of how you route your wires. Make sure nothing's pinched. On the back of the motherboards, quite often there's really sharp uh, traces for the, for the um, back of the motherboard where all the leads are and the solder points. They can be very sharp sometimes and poke into wires and that can create a short. If you put everything back in and it works, great. If it doesn't work when it's out on the test bench or sitting on the box, it could be bad CPU, more than likely a bad motherboard. Motherboards tend to go bad before memory or CPUs. One of the things you could also do early on, which I should have mentioned when we were talking about reseeding the RAM, is try different memory slots. Uh, trying different memory slots can also um, tell you if you've got maybe a bad memory channel. If you've got more than one DIMM, take out all but one and see if it'll boot. If it doesn't boot with that one, then swap it to the other stick. If it does boot, if you've got a bad stick. If it still doesn't boot, could be bad memory channels, could be bad memory controller could be bad motherboard. Again, there's a lot of things that it could possibly be. But the point here is you want to do an order of elimination. You want to take out as many equations and things that aren't needed for the bare necessities of a computer to boot to try and determine what the problem could be. And the only thing your computer really needs to turn on is a CPU with a GPU in it. Now, unfortunately, AMD FX series uh, processors do not have GPUs in them, so you'd have to use a dedicated discrete graphics. So if you're Intel, you would need just the Intel CPU, motherboard, memory, power supply. That's all you need to make it turn on. And if you're on an AMD, you would have to add a graphics card to that. All the other stuff is peripheral and not needed to actually boot into the BIOS. Here we are now. I want to do one more restart to see what happens. It looks like this motherboard here, its problem turned out to be a corrupted BIOS. And that's something that if you don't have a dual a uh, BIOS motherboard or a selectable BIOS switch, which a lot and is still definitely working. Um, but if you don't have a selectable BIOS switch, um, then a bad BIOS quite honestly can also brick your board. If you can't get into the BIOS to do the flash recovery, then pretty much the thing is toast. And that's unfortunate. Uh, but in this case, 
he lucked out because we were quite ready to go to the store and buy new hardware. Now he doesn't need new hardware, whether or not he wants new hardware, that's another thing. If only we knew a place where there was a lot of hardware just kind of hanging out, not, not being used or utilized. But not this place. I was gonna do everything I just mentioned for the sake of this video, but the point here is that now it would have just been going through the motions and not showing you whether or not it would have solved the problem to start doing the process of elimination because as funny as it is, and we were laughing, we quite honestly were laughing, this computer trolled me. It waited. We, we sat here for an hour. I, I, at least 20 minutes at one point, I just let it go. I just let it keep boot looping because some motherboards, like you saw, will detect that there's a problem and then it will kind of start to do a, a, a correct. My Gigabyte motherboard that I use upstairs did it, X99 uh, EVGA board has done it for me, where it, after a few bad loops, it'll recognize like, oh, something didn't wrong, go right, and it will fall back to a kind of a fail-safe or last known good configuration. This one, for whatever reason, just waited, what, two days to do it? He saved a little bit of money, but I think he might be itching to upgrade anyway, especially since he has the atrocity of having an i5-3570K in a B75 LGA 1155. Yeah, you know, get, 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 get up here. You're gonna face the facts, sir. The cameraman owns this computer right now. I'm giving him shit because he's got a k -skew CPU and a B75 motherboard. Guys, thanks for watching today's video. I'm sorry that I couldn't actually go through the process of elimination. I will find a bad computer. I'll find someone with a bad computer. Hit me up if you guys are local to me and you've got a bad computer. Maybe we can figure this out together. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And I'll see you, I'll see you in the next attempted video.